BBC One in five minutes follows some of the projects set up by Barnardos to tackle the needs of children in Britain's rundown areas. A festival steeped in ritual and tradition now on BBC Two poses a problem for the Macha people of the Bolivian Andes in a programme which includes scenes of animals being sacrificed. High in the Bolivian Andes, it's the harvest season and the beginning of winter. For the Indians of Tomokuri village, this is a time to celebrate new life. They believe their ancient cross has brought rebirth. It's dressed as a warrior in readiness for the biggest festival of the year. But this year, the celebrations are under threat. The authorities want to ban their tinku, the ritual battle at the very heart of their festival. Florencio makes his living from raising llamas and growing potatoes. He believes in the spirit world and observes all of the special days in the Indian calendar. Today, it is said, all water is holy and animals should be newly baptized. Florencio's wife, Andrea, and the children tie red wool to the sheep to mark this special day. <laughs> Florencio and his mother are chewing coca leaves, a mild stimulant which accompanies all social occasions. Florencio is worried. Last year's Tinku turned into a vicious set to in which eight people died and many more were seriously injured. As a village official, he wants to ensure that this year's festival will be free of violence. <laughs> The local priest has threatened to ban the Tomakuri villagers from his church if they go ahead with the Tinku. Florencio has called a meeting to discuss what they should do. Entonces, hay gente que tenga si más en comunidad y hay como ya en Japón y atención a que no te que saman atención a que vaya tres años que en Sabata mana mi se canga chuni. In Sawata Castigo, my mams Kia Kamuchis, in my mams, my Nimai Bautismo, Ni Casamiento, Nima Gangachu, Copacavanagor, Ni Copacavanagis, San Antian King Sawata Samanaistia. Miller, Manuel, Multa, Zikushan, Mana Egonam, Nizome, Harangajanis, for Firmas Kangu documents. I sit on a way which can be a star in Kaguns. Sunari, Manis Gumner, Total Yakuza, and Mapskajan. Tatal Galet Hner Baripum. Bueno, mana no culpa hecho si ina pasongas se va a chagas hasta cuando no te son buenos ingles. 
Confrontation with the authorities looks certain. The villagers will not give up their tinku easily, and Florencio knows he cannot guarantee it will be peaceful. Tomakuri is one of the harshest places on earth to live. At 14,000 feet, the air is exceptionally thin and fiercely cold. The villagers here are among the poorest people in South America's poorest country. They're descended from the Incas, with a way of life little changed in centuries. Florencio is about to start his month-long journey to the lowlands to trade this year's harvest of potatoes for maize and pumpkins. Potatoes are virtually the only crop to grow at this altitude. They're a staple food here, and for hundreds of years, the Indians have used an ingenious method of preserving them. Crucial to this method are dry, icy nights. So the villagers have been playing music for weeks to summon the frost. Florencio and his eight-year-old son, Guido, spread the potatoes out on the ground just before nightfall. The water freezes onto the potatoes overnight, and the next day, the ice evaporates, taking all the moisture in the potatoes with it. As a result, they're freeze-dried and can last for years. With Florencio on his journey to the lowlands will be his good friend and fellow village official, Juan, two other herdsmen, and 30 llamas, each carrying a small load. The other highland product which can be traded in the valley is salt. <laughs> Florencio sends two of his friends to one of the nearby mines dug deep into the escarpment. Dynamite explosions release huge slabs of salt, which the villagers collect in person by walking more than a hundred yards into the hillside. They believe that the devil who inhabits this underground world has made the salt. Before the salt can be taken away, Offerings must be made to the devil, and coca must be chewed. His cargo complete, Florencio and his llamas can now depart.
Llamas are uniquely suited to work in this high, dry environment. They can feed on the tough plants which grow at this altitude. They provide milk, meat and wool. And in an area without trees for firewood, their dung makes excellent fuel. This is the first time Guido has made the journey. For him, the 7,000-foot descent in rubber sandals over rocks and gravel and through narrow gorges and dangerous passes will be a tough challenge. Each night, the herdsmen have to set up a new camp on the freezing slopes. Their produce, packed in sacks made of llama wool, form a shelter against the cold wind. <laughs> Overnight, the temperature will fall to minus 15 degrees. <laughs> At home in Tomakuri, Florencia's wife Andrea is weaving llama wool. It's time to make the special scarves and warrior leggings for the Tinku. Andrea is worried about Guido. It's his first time away from home and he's not used to the warmer, heavier air at low altitude. Morning. Today, the steep descent starts in earnest, and the weather should begin to grow steadily warmer. A fully loaded llama can walk around eight miles a day. Llamas have been domesticated for centuries. They're descended from a camel-like creature that once lived wild in South America. <laughs> Compared to camels, llamas carry lighter loads and move more slowly. But they travel in larger herds and are gentle and easy to keep. Thank you. 
Three days later, while Juan and his llamas are far away from Tamakuri, his father dies suddenly, and the funeral is hurriedly arranged. past the coca leaves three times in a circle around the body. They're inviting the soul of the dead man to remain in the world of the living and help them. On the journey, Juan knows nothing of the funeral going on at home. Another llama caravan is returning from the valley loaded with maize. The llamas have bells around their necks to charm the maize back to the highlands. In the same way, it's believed a girl from the valley can be lured home to marry a highland man when he strums his charango. <laughs> The river valley marks the midpoint between the highlands and the lowlands. It's a further three days' walk along the stony trail. <laughs> For most of the year, heavy rains flood the valley, cutting off the highlands completely. After 10 days hard traveling, the mule market at Huaynuma is a welcome diversion. Juan takes a close look, but unlike his trusty llamas, 
Mules are impossible to keep at high altitude. The other attraction is the local chicha, a beer made from maize. For Florencio and Juan, it should be a rare treat. The last leg of the journey is an uphill climb from the river valley to look for farmers willing to trade. The lush vegetation is a sharp contrast to the barren highlands the herdsmen are used to. And the heavier air, combined with too much chicha the night before, is taking its toll. <laughs> After visiting several farmers, they've decided to try Eugenio, with whom Juan traded last year. A price is finally agreed. Now, equal volumes of potatoes and maize will be traded. To ensure a fair exchange, Juan marks the level of his potatoes before emptying his sacks. <laughs> Trampling the husks to remove the corn will make the load more comfortable for the llamas and means they can fit the maximum amount of corn into their sacks. The freeze-dried potatoes are valuable to Eugenio's family because they can't make them at this lower altitude. Okay, Carol, you're so tough. I'm 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 so tough. I'
To remove the chaff from the maze, the herdsmen need to summon a gentle wind. They do this by evoking the wind's consort, a spirit called the Lazy Lady, who stirs the wind from the gully where he's been sleeping. Bargaining has taken longer than Florencio expected. Now it's urgent to load the llamas and start the long uphill journey home. Not only are the llamas beginning to suffer from the humidity and the unfamiliar vegetation, but the herdsmen are anxious to be back in Tomakuri in good time for the tinku. Back in Tomakuri, preparations for the festival have gone ahead in Florencio and Juan's absence. The more chicha is made, the more certain it is that the festival and its ritual battle, the Tinku, will happen. At Guido's school, they're celebrating too. Although the government encourages even the most remote schools to sing the national anthem and fly the Bolivian flag, mines here are on more local traditions. Today, a children's rendition of the Tinku. school Tinku ends in the same enthusiastic display of violence as the adult version. For Guido, the festival also marks another special event, his second baptism. Last years, baptisms and the church blessing of the village cross have taken place at a special mass in the town of Marcha on the morning of the Tinku. This year, the priest insists on celebrating the mass the Sunday before to try to discourage large crowds from coming to town on festival day. <laughs> For the villagers, their cross represents the sacrifices previous generations have made on behalf of the living. It is vital to have it blessed before carrying it into battle. <laughs> Chayo 
Chalikus Kaiman, Uas Kaiwa, Parlas Kaiwa, Uyas Kaiwa. Lidia, Lidia, yo te bautizo en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amén. Ya está. Guido, ¿eh? Guido, yo te bautizo en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amén. Guido. ¿Cómo se llama? Banning the festival altogether is out of the question, but the priest is worried that the ritual battle may end in death. El año pasado, bueno, uh, dicen que hubo alrededor de 10 muertos, pero nunca se sabe. Hay algunos que se van heridos que ya después de un mes o después de unos meses mueren en su casa, pero eso ya nadie llega a saber. Pero sin embargo aquí sí, el año pasado ha habido muchos heridos y también muertos que yo personalmente había visto que los recogían en Puyo directamente para llevarlos a algunos en la movilidad para poder hacer el velatorio. After mass, Florencio has an appointment with the mayor of Marcha. If his village takes part in the Tinko and there are fatalities, Florencio is concerned that he will be held personally responsible. En Chaita, Kawaris, pero no hay que buscar una. Tal vez creo que hasta mal criados que apunta es que guata, que pasa guatas, es que hay en guata bien, es que con guanyos tras. En Chaita, Kawaris, pero piensa que no hay que buscar un pita tan chusca. Mano de lleno, no hay que buscar pita chinga 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 Entonces, no hay comandas por intermedio alcaldes, autoridades sindicales, Rich William Moyes, bases negativismo, en su país con una chicanta, no hay comandas que tienen reflexión, no hay comandas que tienen que In Tomakuri, the villagers have to decide how to respond to the mayor's warnings and the priest's threats. Mana Kangaju, ni bautismo, ni casamiento, ni ima. Gracias, 
Si mana wajar kau guys, tonton betul kau saya kumpulan semua cakap kan, nose songkoi ni kita cakap cakap kasih kita kini sahaja tak kan? Ayat apa ni? It's the first day of the festival. No amount of warnings can prevent the villagers from going ahead with their age-old tradition. Starting with ritual offerings to the spirits. As a cherished symbol of sacrifice, the cross is here to witness the slaughter of a pair of llamas and a pair of sheep. Pairs are important because they represent mutual help and balance. As with the ceremonial cups, which depict a yoke of oxen, left balancing right, and both pulling together. The mood is of celebration, but tradition is strictly observed. Chicha is offered to Mother Earth. Music is said to console the animals, and hand-woven cloths indicate the care and reverence the villagers feel towards the creatures they're about to sacrifice. Next morning, different village groups converge on Macha Town Square. The day starts good-naturedly. Florencio and Juan are here in their official capacity as peacemakers. In the compound that serves as the Tomakuri village's base, they try to calm the increasingly feverish mood and moderate the effects of chicha. As the morning wears on, more and more groups from outlying villages march into town in their conquistadors' helmets.
the police try to maintain a discreet presence. But as the crowds fulfill their responsibility to drink themselves into what they believe is a different, more spiritual level of being, tension is growing. The arrival of the cross is a sign that the dancing should start. The dancers are all male warriors. The women's role is to keep them in their correct ritual formation. By now, rival villagers are taunting each other with music and dancing. Soon the taunts turn to insults and challenges to fight. At first, the fighting is sporadic. Opponents are restrained between bouts by officials with whips. For the moment, the police are in control. As the main square fills up, it's the turn of Tomakuri village to launch itself into the fray. between equals. Fighting is not about winning, but about defining your territory and recognizing your enemies. The belief is that nobody is alone and survival depends on mutual respect. Trying to keep the warring factions apart is a losing battle. The police are heavily outnumbered and decide to take drastic action. Tear gas. Scattered and divided, some of the crowd lose control. Stones were the major cause of death last year.
The Tinku may look barbaric, but the warriors will have no regrets. They'll be proud of their injuries. They've shown their courage and fought for the cross, whose miracle brings them their harvest and keeps them alive. In spite of some serious injuries and numerous victims of Chicha, no one has died. It seems the spirits may after all have smiled on this year's Tinku.